All right, hello everybody. My name is Stephanie, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about the JavaScript semicolon. So don't get too excited. Um, as recent newcomers to the JavaScript world, you're probably wondering what, if anything, there is to uncover about this seemingly harmless character. But I'm here to talk about uh, some of the things you may not know. So I first want you to think about uh, early on when you were learning JavaScript, you probably wrote some code and probably ran it, and it worked, and you didn't put a semicolon somewhere, or after going back, realizing you didn't put a semicolon somewhere, um, adding it back. But the code worked before you did that, so like, what's really happening? Um, and that's what we're going to get into. So show, to show you some examples, uh, here's some code that I wrote. This code console logs turned up, up, up to the console. Uh, you're probably very familiar with, with, with this syntax. Um, this is also valid JavaScript and will not throw an error, and will also console log turn up, up, up to the console. Uh, likewise, this is also valid JavaScript, um, but as you can see, it doesn't use any semicolons. So the semicolon, it's the most feared punctuation in the English language, is popularized by the winky face emoji, and we use it in JavaScript to separate statements, and they're optional, surprise, except when they're not. Uh, so the great thing about this is because there are two schools of thought when it comes to using semicolons, using them or omitting them, there is a lot of healthy debate publicly available online that's also very entertaining uh, regarding semicolons. And we're going to look at one of those instances right here. Uh, this particular instance took place on the Bootstrap GitHub repository, which many of you know as a popular front-end styling framework. Uh, what happens here is someone submits an issue and says that there's a problem when their bootstrap is minified using JSMin because there is a missing semicolon. And they say, hey, you boot, uh, Twitter bootstrap, you should look into this and update it uh, so the error with JSMin doesn't occur. Uh, heads up, bootstrap doesn't use semicolons in their code. So enter uh, at fat, who is Jacob Thornton, co-founder of bootstrap. He replies and says, nope, that's a bug in JSMin. Probably should let Douglas Crockford know about it. Um, in fact, the code in Bootstrap is valid, um, and uh, it was not broken. Uh, but he says, tell Douglas Crockford. So enter Douglas Crockford. Uh, Douglas Crockford popularized the data format JSON. <laughs> uh, he's also known for developing various JavaScript-related tools, such as JSLint and JSMin. And he wrote a book you may have heard of called JavaScript, The Good Parts. So both Jacob Thornton and Douglas Crockford are really respected individuals in the programming community, and they pioneered some great things that we all use today. Um, and the conversation unfolds as follows. Douglas Crockford replies, that is, that is insanely stupid code, and I'm not going to dumb down JS Men for this case. Uh, at, and says, oh, um, uh, consider using an infix operator. This code will break in the future. Fix it now and learn how to use semicolons properly. Uh, and then at fat replies, I have learned how to use them, and that's why there isn't one present. <laughs> <laughs> While this is entertaining for various reasons, including the two people that were involved here, uh, this brings up something important that I think uh, we should all be well aware of uh, when it comes to semicolons, and that is automatic semicolon insertion. So semicolons are optional because of JavaScript semicolon insertion. And when JavaScript is parsed, uh, there is a mechanism called ASI that inserts semicolons uh, into your code based on a set of rules. I hesitate to use the word insert because it's not actually, automatic semicolon insertion is just a term. It doesn't necessarily mean that actual semicolons are inserted into your source code during parsing. It's more of a metaphor for explaining uh, the rules governing ASI. So what are those rules? Let's take a look. Uh, the first rule, when reading tokens of a program from left to right, a token that doesn't match the grammar rule has a semicolon inserted before it if either of the two following conditions are met. First, the error token is separated from the previous by at least one terminator, or the error token is a cl closing curly brace. Uh, to show this rule, uh, this, in this example, there isn't a semicolon after var foo, which would separate var foo as an independent statement from the var baz expression. But in this case, there is a line terminator, so the ASI triggers, and the code is interpreted as follows, which is likely what you wanted to happen. And hey, you didn't have to put any semicolons or spend the effort putting them there. So that's great. Thanks, ASI. Um, however, in the second case, 
Uh, ASI will also trigger here because it sees a line break uh, where we should have technically put a comma. So it becomes this, and now you have a global variable, which isn't what I think you were, I, I don't think you were going for that in this case, or we were going for that in this case. So a case where automatic semicolon insertion kind of creeps up and isn't so helpful. Um, another thing to watch out for, uh, what does it mean when this rule refers to a grammar rule in JavaScript? Uh, I think this slide provides a good example. So if the first token of a subsequent line can be parsed as the same statement as the line before it, it doesn't break the grammar rule and a an, uh, semicolon isn't inserted. So if you look at this code, uh, what do you think will happen? Um, it does not equal this, which is what you think would happen with the line terminator. Because the open parentheses can be parsed as part of the same line as before, given maybe C is a function and we're trying to invoke it um, with those parentheses, your code will equate to this, um, essentially, because of um, uh, ASI won't come in there. So that's something to be aware of as well with this rule. Uh, the condition number two is pretty straightforward and is mostly helpful. So in this case, if you're missing a semicolon before your closing brace here, ASI interprets the code as follows, which is great. All right, rule number two. Um, if the program is parsed until the end of the input um, and it's not yet a complete program, uh, then a semicolon is appended. Uh, this is short for saying um, it's going to insert a semicolon at the end of a file. So if I have this file structure, uh, my your code.js and I have another file, my code.js, and we can cat these files into a program using gulp or something else. Uh, what's going to happen here is the following. Um, because based on the last rule, an open uh, brace can be interpreted as trying to access the indices, the first and second indices of hello, it's going to put it together like this and try to map over that and just pray you get some sort of helpful error message, if any, because you, you're not going to see this in your code at all. You're going to see two separate files and two separate statements here, but ASI is interpreting it like this. Um, but uh, thankfully, in the, with this rule, there's an exception, and at the end of a file, um, ASI will come in and put it in a semicolon so that they're not concatenated like that, which is great. All right, rule number three. Uh, this is essentially saying there are certain places in grammar in which if a line break appears, um, it terminates a statement unconditionally and it will um, add a semicolon in there for you. So these are a few examples of that. And we're going to look at two in particular, uh, the return statements and postfix expressions. So if you can see here on the right, the rules say, for instance, on a return statement, you cannot have a line terminator in between your return statement and the expression or a semicolon will be inserted there. So in this example, uh, does anyone know what this function is going to return? Just think about it for a second. If you said undefined, you are correct. And what's happening here is this line terminator um, is encountered after a return statement. Um, and based on rule number three, this triggers the ASI and it's interpreted as an empty statement followed by a block with the label full name and, the ex and Tobias Funke and followed by an empty statement w and a closing brace. So what actually happens is it's interpreted like this, which is why it's returning undefined. If you want to return an object literal like that, you should do this. Um, put the opening curly brace starting on the same line as the return statement. You could have a line break after that um, and ASI won't come in and trigger, but it'll interpret it um, as you want it to and return the full name of Tobias Fimke. You most likely ran into this type of error in your JSX in React recently. When you're mapping over an array of objects in JSX and you're trying to position that parentheses after the return statement in your map, if you end up putting it on a different line, you probably got undefined, um, which is someplace that uh, it creeped up here at full stack. And that will trigger ASI and become nice there. Okay, so another example of rule number three with postfix, postfix expressions. In this example, I want to postfix uh, increment A. So you would think ASI would assume a semicolon after the plus plus because it can be, in plus plus can be interpreted as part of the line before it and there's a line break in between, but what's really happening is uh, this, which is not what I wanted to do. Um, and that's another example with postfix 
post ex expression. So there are some exceptions here with line terminators that you should be aware of as well. All right, here's the fun, except when they're not part. Just to muddy the waters a little more about semicolons and automatic semicolon insertion. Uh, there are a couple places where ASI is not implied, and that's, for instance, in the head of a for loop. Unlike line terminators or statement separators, for loop semicolons are required, but you, you can't rely on the ASI to add them for you. So for loops need semicolons, and that's some place that you will yourself have to add semicolons. Uh, this last example here shows this exception that ASI will not insert semicolons for you if you're in the head of a for loop. So in, the, in this example on the bottom left, um, you have line breaks in between here, so you think semicolon insertion would come in and interpret semicolons after i equals zero, also after i is less than 10, and uh, it won't because you're in the head of a for loop, so ASI kind of says, like, I'm, I can't help you there, you're in the head of a for loop, which is good, but also bad if you forget to put semicolons in the head of a for loop. Uh, another cool trick is if the semicolon inserted would be parsed as an empty statement, um, it won't be in interpreted there. So this function here, or this for loop, is actually modifying the array above it to replace every element in it with the word pup. Uh, and the cool thing about it is this works um, because of those of that empty uh, opening and closing curly braces an empty statement. And then it's going to console log um, the array afterwards. But if you went like this, because technically a semicolon on its own is considered an empty statement, it won't, ASI won't interpret it here for you because it will be parsed as an empty statement. So this second example won't work. However, if you go in and add the semicolon in yourself, it will work. Um, and this is a trick with for loops you may, maybe haven't seen before, um, but cool to know about and cool to um, uh, explain this rule about uh, automatic semicolon insertion. Uh, ASI is also not implied um, when there is statements appearing on the same line. So the AS, this will trigger the ASI, uh, the second example will trigger the ASI because of the line termination um, and become that last part, but on top you'll get a syntax error. And let's throw in some more exceptions. Uh, grammatically, some statements do not need to be terminated by a semicolon and will not trigger ASI. These are just good to remember, so if else statements, for loops, while loops, do while loops, yes, need semicolons. And function statements, do not. Uh, function expressions, uh, yes, they do need a semicolon afterwards. Uh, but good news is if you do put a semicolon after one of these that technically don't need one, it's just going to be interpreted as an empty statement and won't hurt your code. All right, so now for the final kind of closing arguments about using semicolons and not using semicolons. Um, if you're going to write JavaScript without optional semicolons, make sure you understand automatic semicolon insertion and where it's being interpreted for you. Uh, good thing to note is minification, compression um, on otherwise valid JavaScript code that doesn't have semicolons could cause some unforeseen errors because those programs themselves rely on semicolons to tell them what to do. Uh, ASI has the potential to make your invalid code valid gibberish, as you can see in some examples, without you knowing exactly where that error is coming from because it's interpreting or concatting things together that aren't visibly concatted in front of you. So it makes it harder to debug, um, and sometimes you won't get an outright syntax error for that. As far as I know, performance and file size aren't significant, significantly affected by semicolons or lack thereof, so um, nothing to worry about there. Uh, but my sort of takeaways for understanding automatic semicolon insertion are as follows. If you're preparing or if you're going to start contributing to open source projects, some open source projects their style guides say omit optional semicolons, so you'll need to be aware of that to be able to contribute there. Uh, likewise, some companies omit optional semicolons. Um, poor syntax in general, so if you do write with semicolons and you, know, you miss some in some places, uh, as I mentioned before, you get sort of ASI creep, where you don't necessarily want it, a semicolon there, but it will come at it for you and make your code do weird things. And finally, using semicolons doesn't really absolve you from automatic semicolon insertions. If you write with semicolon, semicolons, then semicolon insertion could still pop up in some places in your code. Like I mentioned, if you have like poor syntax or you have weird line breaks where you shouldn't. So it's in general just really great to understand either side, uh, the ASI on either side, if you write with or without semicolons. 
And then finally, I just think in general, we are better developers when we better understand the intricacies of how our code is being interpreted and what's happening to it. Um, so if you're, whether you're on either side of the argument, understanding automatic semicolon insertion is, is important. Um, and we'll be better developers because of that. Uh, helpful tools as I was preparing for this, uh, babbeljs.io, you can put code on the left and on the right. It'll not only show you the translation of ES6, but also show you where semicolons are being inserted or interpreted, which is really cool because I didn't know there was a tool like that that could show you where semicolon insertion is actually happening. Um, likewise, uh, JSLint and JSHint are helpful there. So yeah, that's the kind of semi-deep dive into automatic semicolon insertion, and I hope you guys learned a little bit more about these seemingly harmless um, uh, little, little guys in your code. So thank you.